Beautiful. Am I ever glad you made it here? We've reached an exciting moment in my Machine Learning Foundation series because we can now extend the single variable calculus we've already covered into multivariate calculus and peer right into the guts of how machine learning algorithms work. Welcome to subject four. Subject four in my Machine Learning Foundation series is called Calculus 2, Partial Derivatives and Integrals. In this, we'll use gradients in Python to enable algorithms to learn from data, and also quite a lot more, as I'll go over in a moment. This Calculus 2 subject we're embarking upon now is the fourth subject in my Machine Learning Foundation series. So it builds heavily upon the Calculus 1 subject on limits and derivatives. Uh, we're going to review the key theory from that Calculus 1 subject that you need to know in order to tackle this Calculus 2 subject that we're tackling now. We're going to do that right in this video. We're going to review Calculus 1 in this video. If you're just jumping in right now, you can make sure as to whether you have the prerequisite knowledge under your belt. We do build heavily on that subject. If you aren't already familiar with calculus, then you are going to want to watch the videos from that subject first before tackling Calculus 2 for sure. This Calculus 2 subject does also build a little bit upon the first subject in the series, the intro to linear algebra class. That isn't so much from the perspective of theory, though there is a little bit of language around tensors that we'll use in the hands-on code demos in Calculus 2. But most of all, it's a familiarity with the practical hands-on code demo knowledge that we cover in Intro to Linear Algebra. If you already feel very comfortable in NumPy, especially if you already feel comfortable in PyTorch, then you shouldn't have trouble jumping right into Calculus 2 now. This Calculus 2 subject is itself foundational for all of the remaining subjects in my Machine Learning Foundation series. It is particularly critical to the eighth and final optimization class, which ties together all of the preceding subjects in the series. And I'll make mention of this optimization class a number of times uh, during this Calculus 2 subject. And I'll kind of say, there's something here that you probably really wish you would know, but we're gonna be ready for that in optimization. And so that's gonna be fun when we bridge all of those links finally and everything comes together in the end but lots and lots of amazing machine learning related calculus knowledge to cover here. Foundational stuff that really is critical to being able to understand how machine learning works in depth. Specifically, in this Calculus 2 subject, we will have three segments. So we're going to do a quick review of introductory calculus from that Calculus 1 subject that I just showed you on the preceding slide. and. So we'll move through this quickly in this video that you're watching right now. Again, if any of those subjects are not already familiar to you, then you should go back and watch those particular subjects from the Calculus 1 videos. Then, so after we do that quick review, we will jump right into segment two, and we will talk a huge amount about machine learning gradients, which are the key, the partial derivative calculus powered key to allowing almost all machine learning algorithms to learn. It is so absolutely important. This segment is one of the most important segments in this entire machine learning foundation series. And then the third segment is going to be on integrals. Yeah, we'll talk about integrals more in a moment in the coming slides. It's relatively discrete from all the other subjects that we've covered so far in the calculus topics of my machine learning foundation series i'll explain more about that in a moment so let's start off with a review of introductory calculus we're going to talk about the delta method in this segment i will remind you of the key rules for differentiating by hand that you'll need to know to move forward in this calculus 2 subject and i'll also refresh your memory on automatic differentiation Cool, let's kick our review of um, introductory calculus by quickly describing what calculus is 
So it's the mathematical study of continuous change, and it has two main branches. The first is differential calculus. So in calculus one, we were focused entirely on the differential calculus branch, specifically univariate, single variable differential calculus. In this calculus two subject, we'll expand upon that to tackle partial derivative calculus, which is so very important in machine learning, essential. The other branch of calculus is integral calculus, and that is a focus of this Calculus 2 subject. It's what we'll be covering in that third and final segment of the Calculus 2 subject. So let's start off by talking about differential calculus quickly. So differential calculus is the study of rates of change. And so if we, for example, consider a vehicle traveling some distance d, over time, and we talked about this example in a huge amount of detail at the beginning of the Calculus 1 subject. So if we consider this vehicle traveling over time, we can take the derivative, we can use differential calculus to calculate the derivative, the slope of the line at any point along this distance over time curve, and that will give us a chart of speed over time. Because at each point along the curve here, this slope corresponds to speed. And yeah, so you can make this chart of speed over time with differential calculus. So hopefully that's very familiar to you. In a nutshell, differential calculus allows us to calculate slopes. All right, so that covers differential calculus in a single slide. Now let's talk about integral calculus in a single slide. So integral calculus is the study of areas under curves. And in a way, it facilitates the opposite of differential calculus. So whereas a couple slides ago, we were able to use differential calculus to calculate the slope of a distance over time chart that gave us a speed over time chart. And with integral calculus, we can then calculate the area under the curve of that speed over time chart, and that will give us the total distance d that we traveled. So where differential calculus allowed us to go from distance to speed, integral calculus allows us to go the other way and calculate distance from speed. Cool, so we'll leave integral calculus alone until segment three. We have tons of juicy partial derivative calculus content to cover in the interim. To remind you, so kind of building up differential calculus, we started off in the first calculus subject by talking about limits, and then we used limits to learn about the delta method. And the delta method is an approach based on limits that enables us to find the slope at any point along a curve by bringing a, another point infinitely close to the point we're interested in. So we calculate the slope between those two points. So if we're interested in the slope at the blue point, we can calculate the slope of the line between the blue point and the orange point as that orange point becomes infinitely close to the blue point. So as the difference between the two points approaches zero, we can use limits to find exactly what the slope is at the blue point. Having learned about the delta method and how we can use it to create this classic representation of derivative calculus, we moved on to learn about derivative notation. So if we have some function f that takes x as an input and produces y, we can represent the first derivative of y with respect to x, so the, the slope between these two variables, using any of these notations. And if we're calculating the second derivative, so going from say, having already calculated the first derivative from distance to speed over time, we could then calculate the second derivative, which would correspond to acceleration over time in that example. So you could denote second derivatives like this, and third derivatives, you can imagine what that would be like from there. So we'll make use of this derivative notation again, we'll expand upon it further, in this calculus two subject by learning about partial derivative notation. Okay, and then a quick reminder of the key derivative rules 
that you need to be on top of in order to understand some of the machine learning specific derivations, partial derivative derivations that we're going to carry out in this calculus two subject. So those key derivative rules that you need to know are the derivative of a constant, the power rule, the constant product rule or constant multiple rule, the sum rule, and the chain rule, which is so very important indeed, and allows us in situations where we have many nested functions, or even just two nested functions, but up to many. <laughs> so in machine learning, it's not uncommon to have hundreds or thousands of nested functions. And the chain rule allows us to calculate the derivative from our output y all the way through to some variable x that could be nested deep within one or many other functions. So the chain rule, absolutely critical to know. And so here's an example of the chain rule mathematics if you want to refresh yourself quickly. Again, this rule and all of the other rules that I've just sped through, we cover in detail in the Calculus 1 subject, including exercises. And one the final rule that uh, you might find handy to make some of the derivations move a bit more quickly in this Calculus 2 subject is the power rule on a function chain. Okay, and right at the end of the Calculus 1 subject, we learned how to represent a simple equation like the equation for a line y equals mx plus b is a directed acyclic graph where tensors connect all of the nodes in the graph. And those nodes could be an input like x, an output like y, or parameters like m and b, the parameters in our model. So we used that graph of a line equation to discover the four key steps in machine learning. So we have a forward pass where we put in our input and then our parameters act upon that input to give us a predicted output, which we call y hat. In the second step, we compare that estimate, that y hat, with the true y values that we know from our data set. And we compare y hat with y to give us a cost, a quantification of how wrong our estimate of y is. Then we can use that cost in step three to calculate the gradient of c with respect to our model parameters, in this case, m and b. And in the calculus one subject, we simply used automatic differentiation to calculate the slope of cost with respect to our model parameters. In this Calculus 2 subject, it's so critical because this is the subject where we're going to learn the partial derivative calculus that allows us to determine the gradient, the slope of cost with respect to our model parameters manually by hand, which is really this, as I've said many times, this essential piece of knowledge. All right, and then once we have that gradient of cost with respect to our model parameters, we can use that slope to adjust our model parameters in a particular direction that will reduce your cost C. And so by repeating this four-step process many times, we can gradually nudge our model parameters, like M and B in this case, into great model parameters for our machine learning model that can predict a Y hat value that's pretty close to the true Y. So to say that one more time, in step three, to calculate the slope of cost with respect to some parameters. So this slope here on this curve of cost relative to some model parameter P, this could be M or B in our line equation. So learning the, this partial derivative calculus to compute the slope with respect to any given parameter in our model, that is the primary focus of this calculus two subject. And in step four, we then can descend this gradient, this slope of cost with respect to any given model parameter. And as we do that many times, as we adjust our model parameter to the left in this case, we gradually descend this cost over parameter curve and find our way to a place where cost is minimized for our model. Right before we start learning some all new partial derivative material, let's jump back to our regression in PyTorch notebook 
the notebook that we ended the calculus one subject with to refresh ourselves on where we were there. All right, in order to open up that notebook, you can make your way back to the Machine Learning Foundation's GitHub repository at github.com slash johncrone slash mlfoundations. And you can either open up the subject four calculus two notebook from where you'll see right at the top of the notebook, we have this review of introductory calculus, which is what we're wrapping up right now. And so this points you in the direction of the regression in PyTorch notebook that we're going to tackle now, or all of the notebooks are available in the notebooks directory itself. So you could access the regression in PyTorch notebook from there. So shortly in this subject, when we start learning some new partial derivative material, I will start doing uh, interactive collab demos yet again. But for now, let's just quickly zoom through this notebook statically to remind ourselves of what we did in it. So we created our input tensor X, which in this case represented some dosage of a drug for Alzheimer's disease. I made up these data points. And then we also had some outcome Y that we're trying to predict with the input X. In this case, it was a patient's forgetfulness score. Again, made up values that I simulated here. If we look at the relationship between these made up values, we can see that as the dosage of the Alzheimer's drug increases, the patient's forgetfulness decreases. And then we initialize our model with random parameter values for M and B. We make sure that we track the gradients on those so that we can calculate um, the slope of cost with respect to these model parameters later. Then we use this regression function here to tie together all of the tensors so far. So M, B, and X get tied together in this line equation, M times X plus B. And then we can plot out using that regression method. We can plot out what our line looks like uh, with our randomly initialized parameters. And as we can see, our regression line does not fit the data points very well at all. But we can use the four machine learning steps that I just summarized. So step one is to use a forward pass, pass our variables into our regression method. And that gives us an estimate y hat for our model at the initialized point. And then we can compare that y hat value with the correct y value that we know from our data to calculate cost C in step two. And we use mean squared error cost for reasons that I describe in detail in that calculus one subject, but that gives us a quantification of how wrong our model is. Um, so we get this cost of about 20 before any model training. And then in step three, we use automatic differentiation to calculate the gradient of cost with respect to our model parameters, M and B. So that's as easy as using this backward method in PyTorch, but as you'll see in this, in this subject, in this Calculus 2 subject of my Machine Learning Foundation series, this is the step that we're going to be able to dig into a huge amount of detail. You're going to understand how we get this exact value, how this slope of cost with respect to the model parameter M is 36.3. We're going to, to manually calculate that value. Um, using partial derivative derivations. And same thing goes for any other parameter in a model, like the slope of cost with respect to the model parameter B. We're going to find out exactly how to calculate this value of 6.3 using partial derivative calculus. All right, and then in the final step four, we use these gradients to perform gradient descent. And so we adjust M and B slightly in order to reduce cost. And so because there is a positive relationship between M, so that the slope of cost with respect to M is positive, which means that if we reduce M a little bit in this gradient descent step, it will correspond to a reduction in cost. And same thing with B, there's a positive relationship between C and B, the slope is positive. And so if we reduce B a little bit, we'll be reducing cost as well. So gradient descent, We'll talk about that, as I mentioned earlier in this video, in extreme detail in the eighth and final subject of this Machine Learning Foundation series on optimization. But even in 
this calculus two subject, we will dig into this a little bit more than we have previously. All right, and so that four step process does work. So by adjusting M downward from 0.9 to 0.5 and B downward from 0.1 to 0.04, we can see that our regression line now fits the data a little bit better. Our cost is decreased from about 20 to 8.6. And by then iterating over our four-step process as many times as we like, we can gradually reduce cost more and more and more. And we eventually find ourselves with a cost that is about as good as it's going to get. We can see that in those final 100 rounds of training, those final 100 epochs of training, our cost doesn't go down anymore. And so it's not worth continuing with this specific approach. And by that point, our regression line fits our data points very well anyway. So we get these, this slope of negative 0.47 and a y-intercept of 1.76 for our regression line. And those turn out to be pretty darn good values. Our machine learning algorithm certainly has succeeded at fitting the points. All right, so we know how to do it at a high level. The key piece in this uh, Calculus 2 subject is going to be figuring out all the nitty gritty detail of this step three. Cool, I promise it's going to be extremely rewarding. Nice, so on that note, we have now completed our review of introductory calculus. Up next is that machine learning gradient segment in which we will learn exactly how to perform partial derivative calculus and understand that step three that I've now talked about a number of times. Cool, let's do it. In this segment two on machine learning gradients, we're going to talk about partial derivatives of multivariate functions. We're going to learn the partial derivative chain rule. We're going to learn about quadratic cost, gradients, of course, as well as a bit more on gradient descent, the backpropagation algorithm, which is a neural network or deep learning specific technique related to gradient descent and partial derivative calculus. It really underlines the importance of the chain rule. We'll just be getting into this topic at a high level, but it will serve as a great illustration of why the partial derivative chain rule and gradients are so important in machine learning. All right, and then we will wrap up segment two with a discussion of higher order partial derivatives. Nice, let's not wait a moment longer. Let's get going.